Sean. Yes? Don't you think it's odd that you're in a relationship now, yet you invite me to maybe the most romantic place on Earth? Okay, look, Jules, listen, I, I made these plans weeks ago. And Gus refused to come on account he's a man, and I'm a man, or some nonsense like that. But I have a point, it's this. I refuse to feel uncomfortable around you. It's silly, you mean too much to me, and, and I'm perfectly capable of keeping this platonic as long as you are. Oh, please, I can. Well, I can too. Great. <laughs> but how? So at least show me what you had planned for this perfect date. Okay, but promise not to laugh. You hired this guy? Technically, Gus did. We lost our deposit. I don't think you're supposed to be more discreet. It's overkill, huh? No, no, not if you're six. <laughs> a mime, though? Really, Sean? I don't know, you don't really strike me as a mime guy. <laughs> no, 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 the mime had nothing to do with me. This mime is clearly working on his own. You seen enough? More than. <clears throat> So Abigail's into opera, huh? No, not really. Just robust Italian men. I didn't even know he sang, actually. Look at that bridge. Yeah, it's beautiful. Little known. Coroner's report said McBain's been dead for five days. Yet, the vandalism hasn't stopped since then. Therefore, we can effectively eliminate McBain. I'm now sensing that someone else wants that land. McBain's got the kind of money that's tough to beat. As a result, he or... She. Or even a he-she had to kill McBain before he got it. He was eliminating the competition. Precisely. Okay. Sean, are you all right? Where's the bomb? Still there. Why are you exercising? If his heart rate drops below 150, he's toast. Oh my God, I wrote this note. What? I left it for Sean as a motivator. I do the same thing before each workout. It's a trick my trainer taught me. What kind of sick trainer have you been working with? Wait a second. So what is the beeping, blinking thing? <laughs> We're idiots. Hello, my name is Sean Spencer. I'm the department psychic. Mrs. Clayton, I'm receiving a psychic transmission from your husband. It's really more of a voicemail, if I'm being honest. A status update, perhaps a Twitter. I believe it's called a tweet. There's no way I'm saying that. Is he for real? In spite of Mr. Spencer's first impression, he is actually the one who led us to your husband's plane. Um, this is... I know you. I met you at our high school reunion. Yes, yes, you did. <laughs> Sean tells me you're a teacher. Yeah, kindergarten. Oh, that's great. I think that's great. I mean, kids, they're, they're so great. That must be really fun. You know, I, I loved my kindergarten teacher. Yeah, before I went into law enforcement, I actually considered to- This is Detective Carlton Lasseter. I do his job, and sometimes his hair, though clearly not today. We should send a unit to secure residence as well. Um, Sean, you know, this ladder is really built for one. <laughs> Oh, Jules, lots of things say they're built for one, but can easily fit two people. Tanning beds, iron lung, that's just to name two. So good. <laughs> you never had broccoli in a milkshake. I, I know. But just think how good it is for you. <laughs> well, well, well. It's 11.20. Look who finally decided to come home. Um, I'm sorry, Sean. Are you upset about something? As a matter of fact, I am. Raj. What did I do? Look, I didn't like this idea to begin with. You've been on four dates now. It's been a complete and total failure. No, Sean, we've been on three dates. No, there was the carnival where Raj won you a big fat stuffed octopus. There was a long walk on the pier where he kept brushing your hair gently out of your face. Then there was dinner tonight where there was an awful lot of hand-holding and who could forget coffee at the police department where you blushed and squealed and giggled like a schoolgirl. That was not a date. He was there to sign some papers. You were watching us? It's called surveillance. I surveillate things. I'm a purveyor of surveillorism. I don't know what that means, Sean. What are you talking about? The wind chimes that I got you for your birthday. <laughs> Every time you hear them, from now on, that'll be me. Okay, Sean, first of all, you are going to be fine. We're going to find you, okay? Don't worry. Okay, this is supposed to be a goodbye call. Now tell your lover, let's go. Listen, before, 
before I go, I have to say one more thing. Of course, Sean. What is it? Say it. I, I need you to know that I love you. Uh, Sean. I think that I... Goodbye, Abigail. <laughs> There's nothing really, but uh, honestly, man, from what my sis tells me, you, you're the amazing one. You said that? I said you were prophetic. What? You're prophetic. Hey. That's it? That's your theory, that he's in town? Well, try this theory on for size. You always argue with your father, and you rarely even see your mother. Maybe, maybe it's just hard for you to wrap your head around the fact that somebody might have a healthy, loving relationship with their family. What? Other than being a war hero, has my brother done to bring on your suspicions? He has an arsenal of weapons in his pants. Sean, you know, you might just try to mask your obvious jealousy for you and... Jeal <laughs> jealousy of you? What? That that's funny. That's me. Uh, how funny is that, Gus? It's pretty funny. Well, let's laugh a little. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's because, because you and I are basically the same person. That's ridiculous. I owe you an apology. I was wrong. For accusing my brother? No, I was going to say you were right. I looked it up. Eve Plum did do three episodes of The Love Boat, playing three completely different characters. Turns out she has a lot more range than I gave her credit for. But now that I'm thinking of it, I was also wrong to accuse your brother. He saved our lives, and well, I owe him for that. That is very sweet. Yes, it is. What's more, I really mean it. I'm sure you do. But it's not that easy this time. Perfectly reasonable question. It's like having a living will. No one plans for that. Jules, would you tell Gus it's normal for friends to discuss when they'd like to be eaten in the event of a tragic, alive-esque scenario? Ew. Thank you. He had this connection through his late grandfather's office with the mayor, and he actually got a Super Bowl tickets. 35-yard line. Super Bowl. It was the most exciting night of my life. Get out of here. <laughs> You and your black friend, get out of here. Wow, Sean, I actually feel better. Thank you. That makes me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come here, because we talked it out. OK, yeah. yeah. I feel so happy. <sighs> Should we keep walking? Sure. OK. Jules. What's up? Oh, why does it smell like old diaper? It's me. What's up with you? Oh, I'm actually meeting this guy for coffee. You mean like a, like a date? Mm, I guess you could call it that. Well, what if we didn't? Oh, it's with Richard from Forensics. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, we know Richard yeah. from Forensics. This guy with the big, uh, you know, that giant, giant set of, uh... Ears? Oh, no, I've never noticed his ears. You know me, Mr. Non-Judgmental. Jules, there are things that you need to know, and I have to say them. Juliet, you don't have the Thornburg virus. What? What? Are you kidding? No, Dr. Raidman just told me. Oh, my God! It looks like you have more time than you thought. Oh, my God! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so happy. I am not going to die in this disgusting room. That's so, that is oh, so good. <laughs> but uh, uh, I still want to say what I was going to say. If that's okay. Sure. Okay, uh, Jules, uh, how do I want to say this? Okay, you know how when we were kids, there were all those cool prizes at, at the bottom of cereal boxes? Yeah. Okay, well, there, there are two kinds of kids. There's the kid who flipped the box over and, and opened it from the bottom and, and grabbed the prize right away. And then there was the kid who waited patiently and ate bowl after bowl of cereal until until the prize just tumble out on its own. There's also a third kid named Mikey who'll eat anything, including the prize. Uh, he's not really important right now. Okay. And? I didn't wait. I, I didn't wait for my Dakota ring or, or my Frankenberry action figure when I was a kid. So what am I waiting for now? All I know is that I don't want to miss out on the prize. What are you trying to say, Sean? That... I... Hmm? That... I... 
I don't know. <laughs>